Hey, hey, I am Marshall Astian, and this is Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, and oops, I forgot to do something. Alright, in the last episode we got a lot of items, and I also said that I was going to get some more items in this episode, but I am not. I instead decided to go and take care of the next palace. Um, and in order to do that, you gotta go back to the light world. And just like we got the heart piece, go ahead and pull this lever. The water will flow, and when you go back to the dark world and you enter uh, this this thing here, it, it's pretty much going to be the same. I mean, the water's going to be the same level and everything, and we're going to find out a little bit more information on that from Sahasrila from this tile right here. Objects exist simultaneously in both worlds with similar shapes. If the form of a thing changes, it will affect the shape of its twin in the other world. Which is exactly what I showed you right there with the water. You pull the water and it flows through this channel here in the light world. Then we go to the dark world. Uh, it's pretty much the same. So that's pretty cool. Um, anyway, go ahead and kill these things and get a key in that chest that appears and use it on this door. And uh, if you want the map, you could go ahead and bomb this wall right here. Ouch. Fireball, thank you very much. And we got the map. Uh, I'll show you the map in a little while. But for now, go ahead and get the key on the bottom pot. Or the bottom skull. Use it on this door. And I'm just going to avoid everyone in here completely. Because I'm already low on health as it is, and I really don't want to use a fairy right now. Anyway, in there, get the key. And go upstairs and use it on this door. Alright. Um, there's absolutely nothing in there. Uh, there's a couple skulls that contain, I don't know some rupees I guess and an item if it's either a heart or a bomb or arrows it's really not worth it it's not worth my time really but what you want to do is use your magic hammer on those stakes up there and pull that lever allowing water to flow freely allowing you to continue this way and now we are in pretty much the main room main center room of the dungeon here and if you want the compass go down here and follow this path all the way around that is all that this room uh, serves there's no other purpose just the compass go ahead and push this block and a chest appears all right, now that I got that real quick, I could show you the map. All we got is the first floor of the basement and basement two, and the boss is here on basement one, um, in the back. It's, it's a little this this uh, palace is a little bit more complex than uh, the previous one, and any any palace so far that we've seen, it's getting a little bit more confusing, but still not too bad. Um, ouch. Alright, just go ahead and go this way. And in here, we get another key. But with these blocks here, unlike the other one, actually, no, we can't push those. I thought we could have. Maybe it's uh, later on that there's a situation like that that you have to push those blocks. I was wrong. Gimme, give gimme give heart, gimme heart, gimme heart, gimme heart. Thank you. Alright. Well, let's go back out now that we got a key. We're going to use it on a door up here. Ooh, rupees. Awesome. All right, go through here. And go ahead and use your arrows or your uh, your boomerang rather to flip that switch. And then before we leave this room, make sure that the blue switches are up and the red ones are down. And you have to go back out this way and into the door down there because there are blue switches that are up and we can't 
go through this way. Right there. So we have to go around. Alright, so now we can cross over those uh, bricks right there. There's nothing in that skull up there, so don't even bother about it. Just going to avoid these enemies. And there's nothing up that path, so go ahead and push these blocks. And go upstairs. Alright, there's a lot more enemies going in all directions around here. It's a little easier to get hit by something. But not that bad. Uh, if you want some rupees, go ahead and push that block forward and fall down on the left side. It's a little bit waste of my time, but there's 20 rupees in there. And uh, if you really want those, you're just going to have to uh, drop down and go all the way back. So it's not really that important. And uh, am I going the right way? <clears throat> Excuse me. I think I am. I all of a sudden got really turned around. Now, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, I'm really turned around now. All of a sudden, I don't know how that happened. Oh boy. Because I thought the water level was supposed to be different in this room. Or, yeah, I'm supposed to just push those blocks. And, yeah, there's nothing up there, like I said. Um, okay, yeah, I guess I just forgot I could push those blocks. That was weird. Brain fart. I'm sorry. Brain fart. Alright, so now that we're back up here, instead of uh, confusing myself and going down the left path, or the left hole, I'm just going to go down this one. And that is when I said to make sure that the blue switches are up and the red ones are down. Otherwise you're going to have to backtrack even more to flip the switches in the right way. Anyway, 25 rupees there and the big key. Alright, now that we got that... We're going to go all the way back to the main room and get whatever is inside the big chest. Just want to check and make sure it's just a heart. I don't know, usually I'm very, very impatient and I don't check every skull all the time. Um, and I should because usually when there's hearts, they're always going to be in the same skull. And if you're low on hearts, it's a good idea to know where they're at. And, um, ooh, give me a rupee. Alright. So anyway, big chest, we got boing. This is the hook shot. It extends and contracts and boing. It can grapple many things. Indeed it can. So now that we got the, uh, the hook shot, we could go over here and get some items. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I don't think there's anything too useful in these pots. So actually, I was wrong. You have to go over there. In that pot was a key. And now we can go up here and use that key on this door. Over here, there's going to be a switch under that skull, but it's one of those where if you step on it and you step back off of it, it's going to... The doors are going to close on you, so move that statue onto it, but don't go through the door up there. You want to go all the way to the right and go onto the left door. Go through the left door right here, and then go downstairs. Uh, go ahead and flip the switch, draining the water. And I might as well check what's in this skull. A heart. Very nice. Uh, I don't know if I go upstairs or downstairs. Let's see what's down here. Uh, I'm not sure. OK. 
kind of lost again all of a sudden. Uh, let's see what's over here. Okay, that I believe is where I need to go. But just to make sure that I'm not forgetting anything useful, let's go this way real quick. And what's up here? Okay, that's also where I need to go, I think. So what's down here? Okay, yeah, this room doesn't have much. It just has rupees, rupees, and hearts. Okay. Um, I think I know where that door goes to. All right. Don't need to go up there. I've already been in that room. That that was the room where uh, where I had to push that statue onto the switch to keep the doors open. All right, well, let's go this way real quick and see what's in here. I don't think there's anything special in here, actually. I might want to pull that. Nope, nothing happens with him. Okay, actually, that's where... It, that's where, that's the door. Okay. Well, I'm kind of just wasting time and going in circles now. Kind of getting turned around. All right, so we got to do that again. Let's go through this door. Let's go back downstairs. Might as well just push this lever again, even though it's not going to do anything. And now we can go up here. Um, in this room, there are just some pots or skulls. i got to remember to call them skulls. They're not really pots anymore. Just got some items in there. In case you're running low. Ouch. Ruby. Okay, well, push um, this block over and you get 20 more rupees there. And I'm just getting hit by everything. God damn it. All right. In the second to last waterfall thing is where you want to go. And then just continue upstairs. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Bum. Alright, in this room, it can be a little bit annoying, especially when these, uh, when these things get right in my damn way. That's when it gets annoying, because there's a current. There's a current coming, and it's going, uh, to our left. And these things here can be really annoying. Always in my way. So try to avoid them at all costs. And in here, just go ahead and get a bomb. Bomb it. I think there's just some more items in there if you're running low. Yeah. Bombs, arrows, magic, hearts. Okay. It's kind of funny because we don't really need any of those items um, for the boss, which is actually right through this door. All you really need for this thing, I don't even know what this is called. I gotta remember to, uh, just to look up on the internet right quick what the name of these bosses are, just to give you that information. But all you really gotta do with this thing is use your, your newfound, uh, hookshot and grab these cloud-looking things, I don't even know what they're called, weird-looking thing. Um, grab it with your hookshot and then just use your sword and dwindle these things down all the way until this giant eyeball squid looking thing is uh, completely exposed. It's a very easy boss. And then whenever he has no more of those things left, he's going to shoot up into the sky and then fall down wherever you are in that general area. So basically, whenever he starts just going around like that, just hit him with your sword. Hit him with your sword, thank you. Oh, okay, I didn't really want to get hit there. Oh, okay, that was really, really unfortunate. Well, it's a good thing I have a fairy. Oh, God. Very embarrassing to die to something like this. Can't believe I did that. I need to be a little bit more careful. 
Alright, well, a couple more hits should do it. And there he goes. Very, very easy. With that, we get our 13th heart container, as well as the next crystal. Astian, because of you, I can escape from the clutches of the evil monsters. Thank you. The Triforce will grant the wishes of whoever touches it, as long as that person lives. That is why it was hidden in the Golden Land. Only a select few knew of its location. But at some point, that knowledge was lost. The person who rediscovered the Golden Land was Ganondorf, the evil thief. Luckily, he couldn't figure out how to return it to the Light World. Well, remember that you have magical powers, which only the hero can make the most of. There are some other magical warping points like the one you saw on Death Mountain. By using them, you can go between the two worlds and find the evil hidden in the dark world. You are the only one who can destroy Ganondorf, the thief. No, Ganon, the evil king of darkness. Do you understand? Yes, I do. May the way of the hero lead to the Triforce. Ching! All right, awesome. Uh, we have we are uh, what are uh, what are we at? 17 minutes into the video. Uh, like I said, there was a couple more items that I can get, but I really don't think I'm gonna bother with it right now. Uh, so in this episode, we got our second crystal here in the Swamp Palace. And uh, let's see, where are we going to go next? We are going to go to number three in Dark Woods, or whatever it's called. Lost Woods, Dark Woods, Dark Forest, whatever it's called. Until then, goodbye. <laughs>